Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of cognitive dissonance theory in media. Have you ever felt uneasy after encountering media content that challenged your beliefs? Well, you might have experienced cognitive dissonance. This theory, pioneered by psychologist Leon Festing during the 1950s, sheds light on how our minds handle conflicting information. Stick around as we explore how cognitive dissonance affects our media consumption and decision making. Cognitive dissonance theory in media refers to the concept that when individuals are exposed to media content that conflicts with their existing beliefs, attitudes, or values, they experience a state of psychological discomfort known as cognitive dissonance. This theory, proposed by Leon Festing during the 1950s, suggests that people have a natural drive to maintain consistency between their beliefs and behaviors, and when inconsistency arises, they feel tension and seek to resolve it. In the context of media, cognitive dissonance can occur when individuals encounter information that challenges their preconceived notions or deeply held beliefs. For example, if someone strongly believes in a particular political ideology and then encounters media content presenting evidence that contradicts their beliefs, they may experience cognitive dissonance. To reduce this discomfort, individuals may engage in various strategies, such as seeking out information that supports their existing beliefs confirmation bias, dismissing or ignoring conflicting information, or altering their beliefs to align with the new information. Understanding cognitive dissonance theory in media is essential for media producers and consumers alike. Producers need to consider how their content may impact audiences' existing beliefs and attitudes, while consumers need to be aware of their own biases and how exposure to diverse perspectives can sometimes lead to cognitive discomfort. Early theorists proposed refinements to the theory, introducing constraints for its emergence, such as commitment, consequences of actions, and self-involvement. Since the 2010s, the theory has been enhanced with integrative models and methodological advancements. While predominantly explored in humans, research has extended to other animals like primates, rats, and birds broadening its scope. Cognitive dissonance theory has been widely applied across diverse social contexts, inspiring innovative experimental designs and earning recognition as one of the most influential theories in social psychology and beyond. For those seeking comprehensive understanding, various sources offer insights into the broad field of cognitive dissonance. Aronson 1992, Brehm 2007, and Cooper 2019 provide historical context and key insights, each offering a unique perspective. Goronsky and Strack 2012 offer a comprehensive overview of cognitive consistency, while Harmon Jones 2019 synthesizes modern perspectives, catering to advanced researchers in the field. Hey everyone, today we're diving into an intriguing concept, cognitive dissonance theory. This theory, first explored by psychologist Leon Festinger, originated from a study of a cult that believed the world would end in a flood. When the apocalypse didn't happen, Festinger observed how different members reacted. Here's the kicker, while some acknowledged they'd made mistakes and moved on, others doubled down, claiming their faith had saved the day. So, how does attitude change come into play? Festinger's theory suggests we naturally seek harmony between our attitudes and behaviors to avoid dissonance, that inner conflict we feel when there's inconsistency. Let's break it down. Say some young coerced into doing something they don't agree with. There's a clash between their beliefs and actions, creating dissonance. But since they can't change the past, they'll adjust their attitude to reduce that discomfort. In a classic experiment by Festinger and Carl Smith, participants were paid either $1 or $20 to convince others a boring task was fun. Those who received just a buck actually ended up rating the task more positively, while the $20 group didn't feel that same dissonance. What's the takeaway here? It's not just about what we do but how we justify it to ourselves. Next time you're in a situation that doesn't quite align with your beliefs, pay attention to how your mind tries to reconcile that dissonance. And that's the scoop on cognitive dissonance theory. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more mind-bending psychology content. See you next time. Cognitive dissonance is like having a mental tug of war between conflicting beliefs or values, and it's more common than you might think. Picture this. 
You believe in being kind to animals, yet you find yourself chowing down on a juicy burger. That's where cognitive dissonance kicks in. This theory, cooked up by psychologist Leon Festing during the 1950s, explains how we squirm when our beliefs clash. It's like a little mental alarm going off, making us feel uneasy, guilty, or even ashamed. So, how do we wriggle out of this discomfort? Well, According to Festinger, we've got a few tricks up our sleeves. We might tweak our beliefs to fit our actions, convincing ourselves that maybe animals aren't harmed as much as we think. Or, we might change our behavior, opting for a veggie burger instead. Festinger's theory isn't just some abstract idea, it's been put to the test in all sorts of real-life situations. From marketing strategies to political debates, cognitive dissonance is always at play shaping our choices and attitudes. Understanding this theory gives us a glimpse into the messy world of human behavior. It's like peeking behind the curtain to see how our minds work, and trust me, it's fascinating stuff. So, next time you find yourself torn between two beliefs, remember, cognitive dissonance is just your brain's way of trying to make sense of the world. And who knows, maybe understanding it a little better will help you navigate those tricky moments with a little more grace. Because cognitive dissonance is internal, it's not visible to the naked eye. Leon Festinger, the theory's pioneer, believed we're all driven to dodge or resolve it leading to certain defense tactics when confronted with it. These defenses fall into three kinds. Avoidance. This means steering clear or brushing off the dissonance. People might dodge situations or conversations that bring it up, or throw themselves into busy tasks to distract. Delegitimizing. Here, folks try to undermine the evidence of dissonance. They might dismiss the source of the conflict as untrustworthy or biased, casting doubt on its validity. Limiting impact. This involves downplaying the importance of dissonance saying it's a any off or not a big deal. They might argue that their actions aren't harmful or justify them with rationalizations. Alternatively, individuals might tackle the inconsistency head. They can resolve cognitive dissonance by either aligning their behaviors with their beliefs or vice versa. Consider these real-world examples. Smoking. Despite knowing it's harmful, many smoke. They may justify it by finding comfort in the act or using substitutes to ease the discomfort. Eating meat. Animal lovers may grapple with guilt over consuming meat. Some opt for alternatives or limit their intake to ease the tension. Household chores. Despite believing in gender equality, some still expect their partners to shoulder most chores. They might rationalize it by downplaying the effort involved. Fast fashion. Despite knowing its environmental impact, many still shop from fast fashion brands. Some seek alternatives or thrift stores to align with their values. Cognitive dissonance isn't picky, it can hit anyone. Factors like social pressure or tough decisions can trigger it. And its effects? They range from stress and guilt to a push for change. To tackle it, one can align their actions with their beliefs, adjust their beliefs or change their perspective on the behavior. Seeking support from a healthcare professional is also an option if distress persists. In a nutshell, cognitive dissonance is that internal struggle between what we do and what we believe, and understanding it can help us navigate life's twists and turns. And that's a wrap on our exploration of cognitive dissonance theory in media. We've uncovered how conflicting beliefs and media exposure can lead to psychological discomfort. Remember. Understanding cognitive dissonance can help us navigate the media landscape with greater awareness. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more insightful content. Until next time, stay curious.